Welcome back to the show, Business Mastery for Startups, Scale-Ups, and Early Stage Businesses with your host, Jerry Godori. That's me. Today, I'm super excited to bring this topic. I've been wanting to do it for a while now, and that's this, three superpowers that startups have. Now, if you're a startup founder or an early stage business leader or a small business operator, you know there's plenty of challenges. There's plenty of ways that the deck is kind of stacked against us. When we're selling against an enterprise competitor, they have a lot of resources that we just don't have, a lot of things that we can't access. But we do have three things that they don't have. We have three superpowers that they only wish that they could utilize. Let me grow right into this with the very first one, and that's this, founder's presence. Now, I don't care if you're, if you're recruiting. I don't care if you're closing a deal. I don't care if you're stuck in a tough negotiation. If the founder comes on the call, there's going to be a difference in the way the person you're interacting with responds. Founders have a certain level of presence. Here in the United States, there is a strong bias, almost fetishization, fetishization, is that a word? Almost a strange fetishization of the concept of founders of starting a business. Being an entrepreneur is held in very high regard here. And when you hop on the phone, you're the boss's boss, the boss of bosses. You will get a reaction that people on your team won't. Now, a quick note here, don't pull this ace card out too quickly for two reasons. Number one, uh, there's one thing no founder in the world has, and that's very much time. But number two, if you bring it up too early, it can backfire. If the founder's making cold calls, uh, they, they do lose some credibility. They just look small when that happens. But when a founder is brought to a call, that's a wholly other thing. So the number one here, use your founder presence wisely, but understand that if you hop on a call to recruit a sought after candidate and you play your founder card, your presence is more likely to bring that candidate aboard than the best recruiter you could ever hire. If you hop onto a sales call towards the end of the cycle and bring your presence and your story and your gravitas to that call, you're far more likely to close that deal than what the best salesperson could just by being the founder. So the first of these superpowers is the founder's presence. And it's incredibly powerful. Use it well. How do you play this up? Speak to your story, to your excitement, and to your passion. When it comes to large enterprises, that's one of the first things to go is passion. There's a lot of advantages to working with an enterprise company. I haven't seen too many people list passion on that list. But when you as a founder are talking to, again, an ideal candidate or you're trying to close a sought after deal and you're sharing your passion and you're just oozing that passion in your presence and your talk, that is motivating and that is influential. So the very first of the three superpowers that founders have is their presence. So startup superpower number one founder's presence. Number two, number two is being nimble. Now, again, picking on enterprise organizations again, uh, they can be described as many things, just like with our first example, but nimble's rarely one of them. If you're dealing with a large organization, it's typical for them to have a level of bureaucracy that not only impacts the recruiting cycle, but also the sales cycle. If you are trying to bring aboard a top candidate at a Fortune 500 company, there's probably a pretty set, darn near unchangeable process that you have to leap through in order to make that happen. Now, sometimes with executive sponsorship, you can work some, some things there, but that by itself is a part of the challenge of working in an enterprise organization. Startups don't have that problem. You can make things happen when you're a smaller firm, 
when you're 20 people or less, there's not much that you can't do by way of nimbleness. And don't discount the value of this to a prospect, whether they be, again, a candidate or a potential client. On the candidate side, if you've got that ace person that you've been dying to hire, but you know that they're getting another offer or you know that they just had their final interview and you're just starting, if they're all that, use your nimbleness, rearrange things, reprioritize, get your people involved that need to be involved in order to make that hiring decision immediately. Again, don't hire somebody because you're excited by them and then skip your due diligence and skip uh, your, your qualification. I'm not suggesting that. I'm saying utilize your nimbleness to make the changes that are necessary. And the exact same thing is true on the sales side of the equation. Again, if you know you're entering a sales cycle late, if you know that your competitors are a couple steps ahead in their presentations, that they're more likely to get to their close before you are, then use your nimbleness. It's something that you will not have forever, but you darn well should be using while you can. So the second superpower, and it's an important one, is nimbleness. It's also related to the third superpower. And the third superpower is simplicity. Simplicity. I need to say it one final time for my friends in the back seats. Simplicity. While you're small, you don't require complexity. As your organization grows, you're going to need to add systems and processes for reporting and for efficiency that will slow you down, that will take away from the nimbleness that's your second superpower. You will become complex by necessity, but simplicity is huge. It allows you to make changes without dragging you down. It allows you to partner with organizations in a way that is at risk of using the, defini the, the name and the definition, complex. You know, when you are a $50 million company, your ability to collaborate with another 50 or $100 million company while present will be more complicated. And that complication will dramatically slow things down and dramatically increase the likelihood of something going sideways. Your NDAs will be more complex. Your contract agreements will be more complex. The way that you do things will be more complex. And every time in this, in this podcast that I've said complex, you can substitute the word slow. And as we all know, my friends, time kills all deals and slow is bad. Quote something from the military, smooth is slow and slow is fast. So again, you've got to make sure that you utilize that simplicity to your advantage. Don't go over complicating things unnecessarily. Now, these three things combined, if you put founder's presence and nimbleness and simplicity together, another way to look at this that's a huge kind of synergistic advantage of the three that startups have, it's the ability to do things that bigger companies can't. Said differently, to do the things that aren't scalable. And this brings me to an important point here. There are things you won't be able to do as you get bigger, and that's the nature of the beast. That's simply the way things are. But doing the things that, that, that won't scale now will give you a depth of knowledge, a nimbleness, simplicity, and utilization of your of your founder's presence that your competitors, if larger, cannot bring to the table. This is your competitive advantage. Now, this brings me to where I want to wrap this week's session up, and that's with a warning. And it's a warning of something I see all too often. For those of you who haven't heard me introduce myself before, I've been doing this since the late 90s. I've worked with hundreds of companies and thousands of, of, of folks, and I can say with authority that this happens all the time. As companies get bigger, 
in a desire and an earnestness to grow and to be perceived as large, they give up these advantages before they have to. They, they do the things that they will need to do when they scale before they have to do them. They start putting systems and processes in place that will be important later on, but not only aren't necessary now, but are so premature often that you can't even be certain that they're the right ones. So my warning here, folks, very simply, don't give up on your advantages until you have to. Do the things that won't scale. Learn the lessons that they teach you. So as these additional complexities become necessary, you've taken the time to in, in, uh, implement them in the right way and make sure that you're utilizing the right systems and processes. And that's going to be a night and day difference. So as you gradually have to give up your superpowers, as your founder simply becomes too busy leading teams to get involved in recruiting, when that founder goes from asset to liability in that category, and the same with sales, when you no longer are small enough to be nimble and your organization is too big to be simple, that you've learned the lessons to grow and scale in a way that keeps your special sauce, that makes you the unique entity that you are. Your goal is not to be a carbon copy of anybody else. Because if you're building a Me Too service or building a, a Me Too product, then the only thing that you can compete on is price. And if you want to see how that story plays out, just to pay, take a page from the airlines book on that incredibly quick race to the bottom that they're all experiencing. So that's what I want to talk about today, our three startup superpowers, the founder's presence, nimbleness, and simplicity. And I wrap that up with a warning not to give up on those things too quickly. As always, I'd like to thank you for sharing your time with me. I'd like to recommend, if you like the things that you see here, that you not only subscribe to our, our YouTube channel or to our audio program, wherever you've heard it, but also please leave a review. It helps us to get noticed by other organizations. And additionally, if you haven't already, check out our book, Destination Employer on Amazon, or go check out destinationemployer.co for a deeper dive into the methodology and program there if you'd like to see it in an expanded format. You have a great week. Go out, build something, and be awesome.